Hi everyone, my name is Raphael from Energize Me Fitness. Energize Me Fitness is my online website for workout videos and also the home of a spe very special program which is dear to my heart called the Bone Density Booster Program. Today I'm shooting this video at my clinic in Melbourne, Australia which is called Living Energy, Pilates and Exercise Physiology. So I'm an exercise physiologist and I'm also an expert at improving bone density with exercise. Over the years, I've helped hundreds of people with osteoporosis improve their bone density. So today, I wanted to share with you some of the essential strategies you need to put into action in order to stop or reverse the loss of bone density. Now, before we get into that, I should explain my bone density booster program the details of which I will include in the description for anyone who wants to find out more. The Bone Density Booster Program is an, is an exercise program which is specifically designed to stimulate bone hardening. It's designed with the latest medical research into bone metabolism and is adaptable for anyone. It is a complete step-by-step -step program that guides you safely through the stages required to improve bone density. As I said, if you want to find out more about it, the details are in the description of this video. I think it's also important for me to say that the advice I'm giving is general in nature. I don't know anything about you specifically, uh, so I can't give you definitive advice. Um, but the general recommendations that I do present here will need to be adapted to suit your own level of fitness, uh, your own previous training experience, and whatever medical conditions you might have. Again, I'll include a link in the description you can use if you want to book in a Zoom consultation or get in touch with me directly. Now let's talk about osteoporosis. Osteoporosis means porous bones and it's a condition that causes bones to become thin, weak and fragile. Osteoporosis occurs when bones lose minerals such as calcium faster than the body can replace them. Osteoporosis, from a medical perspective, is defined as a systemic skeletal disease characterized by low mineral bone mass and microarchitectural deterioration of bone tissue. That's quite a mouthful. Believe me, I had to practice that. In other words, your bones become thinner and more porous. That's the, uh, that's the important bit here. So you can see here a picture of healthy bone versus osteoporotic bone. You can see in the healthy bone that there's more white area, which is the bony mass itself. Whereas in the osteoporotic bone, there's less white area or less bone and more of the uh, darker areas, which are the gaps between the bones. So obviously more gaps means more fragile. As a result, even a minor bump or accident can result in a fracture. And fractures due to osteoporosis can result in chronic pain, disability, loss of independence, or even worse, premature death. Okay, bone mineral density is measured using a special x-ray scan called a DEXA. The DEXA scan measures the bone mineral density at a number of sites or bony sites in the body. So low bone density is diagnosed when the bone mineral density represented as a T-score, drops below a critical threshold in the spine, the femur, neck, or the total hip. T-scores are a means of measuring bone loss compared to that of a 30-year-old of the same gender. Just to illustrate, a person over the age of 50 with a T-score above minus one is considered to have relatively normal bone density, although starting to border on the lower end if they're close to minus one. Osteopenia is considered low bone density and is diagnosed as a score between minus one and minus 2.5. The minus one represents one standard deviation from the 30 year olds bone mass of the same gender. And minus 2.5 will then be minus 2.5 standard deviations. So osteoporosis, which is more severe than osteopenia, uh, is diagnosed with a T-score of below minus 2.5. Alright, the bone mass of an individual later in life is really a result of a couple things. 
Firstly, the peak bone mass that they develop during their um, growth and uh, maturation, as well as a subsequent rate of loss of bone as an adult. Uh, and that's really affected by a number of factors. I mean, firstly, there's genetic factors which contribute to our peak bone mass, but probably more importantly, or just as importantly, there are lots of environmental and slash lifestyle factors. You know, things like if you played a lot of sport as a kid, and particularly running sports, jumping sports, things that involved a bit of impact, uh, then you're likely to have a good peak bone mass as long as your um, nutrition was good during those years. However, other than uh, your peak bone mass and the rate of loss as an adult, there are a number of other risk factors which do contribute to um, your fracture risk later on. So risk factors such as um, increasing age, because as we age, we do lose bone mass um, as a rule. Uh, gender, women suffer from osteoporosis or low bone density more than men. Uh, family history of the condition, so if you had a direct relative, a parent, someone like that who had osteoporosis, then there's more of a chance that you'll have it as well. Uh, things like uh, sunlight exposure, so whether you have enough vitamin D. Uh, low intake of calcium, so your nutrition, if you're not drinking milk and other calcium fortified foods. Um, but also things like low body weight. So I have a few clients who, um, you know, let's say a petite, and as a result of being fairly petite, they actually have uh, fragile bones. Uh, just because their bones don't get enough impact during the day or enough strain put on them to, um, to continually improve and strengthen. Now, other things that are, in, um, that are risk factors are smoking. So people who smoke tend to have more weaker bones. Uh, excess alcohol consumption. So if you drink a lot, then again, that affects your bone density. Uh, physical inactivity. So again, if you're not stimulating your bones, they won't develop, they won't continue to retain that calcium. Uh, and also other things like medications such as long-term corticosteroid use. So unfortunately, a side effect of that is, is uh, weaker bones and also reduced estrogen levels. So women who are postmenopausal, particularly in those first couple years postmenopausal, will lose quite a bit of calcium. Uh, it tends to, re the rate of loss tends to reduce after three to five years. Um, but if you're low in estrogen, you'll typically be lower in bone mass as well. Um, and then there's some other factors such as um, people who um, have malabsorption disorders such as celiac disease uh, or certain hormonal disorders such as um, an excess of thyroxine. They'll also have a higher risk of having osteoporosis. But I guess if you're watching this video, I, we can assume that you've probably got low bone density uh, for one or more of those reasons. Uh, and I guess the important question to ask yourself now is, what do you do about it? So fortunately, there are some proactive strategies that you can put into action, and that's what we're gonna go through now. So I should mention that these, I've listed these not in any particular order, so um, I've just listed them all. So firstly, there are a number of pharmaceutical options available for people these days, um, and they can help with the rate of bone formation and also reduce the rate of bone loss. Now, this is not something that everyone needs to do, uh, but it's something you can certainly discuss with your GP, your doctor, uh, and find out what options are available for you because it will vary depending on your own health status and what other medications you might be taking at the time. And, and you should also weigh up, I guess, um, whatever your doctor recommends, you should weigh up what the potential side effects are and um, because everyone's circumstances are gonna be different and it's really only something that you can discuss and, and decide, maybe in communication with your, your, your doctor. Right. The second strategy to put into action is exercise. Uh, and that's where prof exercise professionals like myself come in and also uh, the bone density booster program that I was mentioning earlier. Um, so exercise has the potential to reverse bone loss. Our bones become stronger when the right amount of impact or extra strain is placed on them. This means there are certain exercises 
that are better for building bone. There are also certain exercises which are potentially dangerous for you, so it's important to know which is which are the right ones and which aren't. And also, uh, and it's not even that simple because sometimes the right exercises, if I just said, all right, let's all do exercise X, then you know somebody who's never done any training, that could be quite unsafe for that person. All right, so again, this is where I say everything has to be adapted for you, for your individual circumstance and your individual uh, experience with training and physical activity. But anyway, I digress. So weight-bearing exercise and resistance training are the types of exercise that do create sufficient strain to result in bone strengthening. And that's where my program comes in because, again, I say... It takes you step by step through uh, the stages that you need to build up, even if you're sedentary, so you're not doing any exercise, build you up from that point, that beginning point, right through to the point where uh, you're really um, building bone. Okay, And you can find out more about that in the description and also on my website, energizeme.fitness. Um, but anyway, weight-bearing exercises such as uh, squats, Lunges, running, jumping, dancing, playing sport are all good for increasing bone density. Low impact activities such as uh, walking, swimming, cycling uh, are not so good for building bone. Okay, although they may be very beneficial in other ways. Okay, third, the third strategy is really all about nutrition. Getting enough calcium is essential. Uh, in postmenopausal women, there's evidence, and I say strong evidence, that a high calcium intake will slow the rate of bone loss and may reduce the risk of fracture. Generally speaking, you need to have about a thousand milligrams of calcium a day. That's for adults. However, the dose does vary depending on your age, uh, your gender, um, and so what I've done is I've included a link in the description which you can use to have a look at uh, the, a reference table of uh, recommendations of calcium intake for your, for your age and gender. The fourth strategy is to make sure you get enough vitamin D. Now recommendations for vitamin D, D are a little tricky uh, because we get vitamin D from sunlight and a fair skinned person uh, can spend 15 minutes a day in the sunlight and they might get enough vitamin D. A darker skinned person might need to spend an hour or two in the sun every day to get enough vitamin D. And of course, you've got to weigh that up with increasing sun exposure being relating to an increase in uh, chance of getting skin cancers. So um, it's not entirely straightforward. Uh, you can also get vitamin D from certain foods, particularly uh, fatty fish like salmon, tuna, mackerel. Uh, beef liver, you can also get it from cheese and egg yolks. Foods with added vitamin D, such as milk, orange juice and cereal, also have vitamin D. Um, but it can be difficult to get enough vitamin D from food also. So you've got the sun on one side, getting enough sunlight exposure, getting it from food. So it might just be easier for a lot of people, and certainly in my case I do this, I just have a vitamin D supplement. So experts recommend you should have about 60, 600 IU of vitamin D a day for adults up to the age of 70 and about 800 IU for adults over the age of 70. The fifth strategy is to address the lifestyle risk factors such as uh, keeping your alcohol intake low, you know, avoiding or just not smoking at all. God knows it's, uh, it's not good for uh, lung cancer anyway uh, and maintaining a healthy body weight. And lastly, but certainly not least, we want to reduce the risk of falls. So this can be achieved by mainly through specific balance training uh, and, and just being physically active. So physically active adults have a 50% lower chance of falls compared to their sedentary counterparts. So balance training is also an important part of the Bone Density Booster program that, we, that I run. Um, so again, check the description if you want to find out more. So there you have it. 
the lowdown on osteoporosis and at least six really important strategies to put into place if you have low bone density. Firstly, um, talk to your doctor about potential um, pharmaceuticals. Secondly, make sure you're physically active and exercising and doing the right types of exercises. Thirdly, nutrition, making sure you get enough calcium. Fourth, vitamin D, so whether that's sunlight exposure, um, foods that you're eating, uh, or a supplement. Uh, addressing those lifestyle factors, as well as reducing the risk of falls through balanced training and, and physical activity. So I hope you really liked this video. Um, if you did, hit the like button. It lets YouTube know that these sorts of videos are important. And what can be more important than uh, improving someone's health? I mean, literally speaking, we could we could save someone's life with some of this advice. So, so it's really important. Now, I've also got more videos underway. Uh, they're currently in pre-production. So if you want to find out about those as soon as they're released, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, feel free to write comments uh, on the video. I'm happy to interact with people through comments and find out, particularly I'm interested in finding out about what people are doing in their own lives and what strategies they've put into place uh, and what's worked for them. Now, I've also included in the description, uh, if you want to get in contact with me directly at my, um, at my clinic, if you happen to be in Melbourne or, or if you want a Zoom consultation, I'm happy to do that too. You can contact me through the Energize Me Fitness website as well and find out more about that Bone Density Booster program, which can take you from being uh, completely sedentary all the way up through to helping reverse your bone loss and reversing you out of that osteoporosis diagnosis. All right, that's all from me. Now it's up to you.